rise and shine. You're watching WCTV Eyewitness News. The Good Morning Show starts now. All right, we are back starting are. off this six o'clock yeah. hour. We have made it to Wednesday we already. Were, we were pink. Yeah. Looking very nice. We pink were pink. on you. I like it. See, match my flower. Yes, Not yes. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I was trying. I was like, I hope my pink is, you know, close to his pink. I didn't realize there were different pinks, but I, I don't see colors as well as you all do. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I struggle sometimes. Uh, but thank you all for getting up with us and, and, and being here with us on a Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. Got lots to talk about. Um, first things first, let's do a little bit of weather. And, you know, I'm going to talk about these temperatures that, by the way, are starting a little higher this morning compared to yesterday. We had all those upper 60s yesterday, right? Well, today it's all low 70s, and I think we're going to start getting used to this more and more over the next couple of days. 72 Tallahassee and Perry, 70 in Valdosta, Apalachicola's at 73. I don't see a lot on the radar picture, not across our part of the southeast. Now, up in the parts of central Alabama and maybe even central Georgia, I see some showers, and some of those will try to get here later this afternoon. I'm not going to take the rain chances out of the forecast. But like yesterday, those showers few and far between and what that's likely going to do for us is going to give us lots of hours of really high temperatures. We made it to 95 yesterday. We spent like seven hours up over 90. I think we're going to have something very similar on tap for today. I also expect we're going to find some changes in this forecast the next few days. None of those, by the way, include anything going on in the tropics. All quiet out there. I do have a changing and unsettled full forecast coming our way. We'll get to it in just a couple of minutes. All right, well, we do start this uh, hour with breaking news this morning. Tallahassee police are investigating a crash at Capitol Circle Northwest and Hartsfield Road. Yeah, due to the crash, Capitol Circle Northwest southbound is blocked off from Commonwealth, Commonwealth Boulevard to Hartsfield Road. Now it's expected to be closed for several hours, slowing down the morning commute. So that's from Commonwealth to Hartsfield. That's just south of the interstate over there. Mm -hmm. um, that's over there by the Home Depot and over there by the yes. Waffle House, all those places. So if that's your morning commute, by the way, um, find a different way. Closed off is going to make for uh, a sloppy morning mm -hmm. commute. Yeah, so please try to avoid. And as you can see, our video there, we do have a reporter on the scene who got that video, a very, very bad crash. And we're told that um, one of the vehicles, of course, is a TPD car. Um, once again, though, uh, TPD says there's limited information at this time during the ongoing investigation, but we will bring you the latest whenever we learn more. All right, some other news this morning. Survivors and victims, family members of the Uvalde and Buffalo shootings will testify before Congress today on gun control. Yesterday, actor Matthew McConaughey, who is a gun owner and a native of Uvalde, Texas, he traveled to Washington to urge Congress to strengthen background checks for gun purchases and boost the minimum age to buy an AR-15 style rifle from 18 to 21. CBS News' Elise Preston has more on the growing national outcry for new gun control legislation. Thank you. Visiting the White House, actor Matthew McConaughey made an impassioned plea for change after a wave of mass shootings and gun violence that shocked the nation. We start by making the loss of these lives matter. Find a middle, middle ground the place where most of us Americans live anyway. The Uvalde, Texas native spoke of meeting the parents of 10-year-old Alethea Ramirez. She's one of the 19 students killed with two of their teachers in one of the worst school shootings in U.S. history. Now, Alethea, her dream was to go to art school in Paris and one day share her art with the world. On Capitol Hill, the son of 86-year-old Ruth Whitfield, who was killed in last month's supermarket mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, urged lawmakers to take action. Is there nothing that you personally are willing to do to stop the cancer of white supremacy and the domestic terrorism, terrorism it inspires? Senators involved in bipartisan talks appear to be moving toward a package that could include enhanced background checks and incentives for states with red flag laws. Every day we get closer to an agreement, not further away. We're hoping to actually get an outcome that'll make a difference uh, in the areas of uh, mental health, 
school safety. Later this morning, the House Committee on Oversight and Reform will hear from families and survivors of the Uvalde and Buffalo shootings during hearings examining the gun violence epidemic in the U.S. Elise Preston, CBS News. Among those scheduled to testify, 11-year-old Mia Serrello, a fourth grader who smeared her classmates' blood on herself to appear dead during that Uvalde mass shooting. And getting serious about school safety, yesterday, Florida's governor signed a bill into law doubling down on resources at schools to keep students and faculty safe from gun violence. Gun safety on top of all of our minds following several recent mass shootings across the country. Now that includes the one in Uvalde, Texas, where 19 people, 19 kids and two teachers were killed at an elementary school. The new school safety measures bill resonating with many following the Uvalde school shooting just a few weeks ago. Our Brandon Spencer has more. The signing of House Bill 1421 Tuesday adds to the state's record funding numbers for mental health and school safety. The funds, $140 million for mental health and another $210 million for school safety allocated in the state budget signed just days ago. The new law authorizes the Commissioner of Education to enforce rather than just oversee school safety and security compliance and also requires law enforcement officers to be involved in active shooter drills. The Leon County Sheriff's Office says the new bill reinforces what they already do, but they're glad proper mental health training is now state law. People are posting abnormally online. What does that mean? Do you report it? Do you take it as a joke? So that training that um, the governor signed as part of that law will definitely help people become trained to recognize these shifts in mindsets that we're seeing sometimes triggering um, these mass shooting situations. So we are very happy that it's being required now. That requirement now means 80% of school personnel must undergo youth mental health awareness training every year. Governor DeSantis says the goal is for students to always feel safe in schools and for the districts to feel equipped to address any mental health needs. Reporting in Tallahassee, Brandon Spencer, WCTV, Eyewitness News. Now, the bill also requires school boards to create reunification plans in the event of an evacuation. In Franklin County, the sheriff says deputies are working to become better equipped and trained to respond if there is an active shooter on a school campus. Sheriff A.J. Smith says deputies are trained to engage an active shooter immediately and use all necessary force to eliminate the threat. He wants the public to know deputies will put children's lives before their own. Sheriff Smith hopes to get approval in the upcoming budget to purchase ballistic shields for deputies protection. He says he and the superintendent are working to improve communication and tighten security, including adding higher fences. The fence is a layer. Deputies in the school is a layer. Uh, the Guardian program, we have the Guardian program here, so we have staff, uh, school staff that is armed and trained. And hopefully the more layers we have, the quicker we can stop that threat that may come to our school. The sheriff also urging residents to report any threats to the sheriff's office. He says he'll continue to work with the Northwest Florida Health Network to provide mental health help to county residents who need it. And yesterday on the Valdosta State University campus, law enforcement and medical professionals participating in an active shooter drill. It took place in Ashley Hall and lasted several hours. You know, so far in 2022, it's more than 245 mass shootings in the United States, according to the Gun Violence Archive. And an expert says that we can be traumatized just by seeing these scenes on social media or in the news. Mandy Gaither has more on collective grief and how it can be used to help cope and heal. A graduation party, a grocery store, an elementary school. The past month, shootings have happened in places that we think of as safe. We perceive threat and then we go into survival mode. We don't have to directly experience something bad to be traumatized by it, says licensed therapist Jody Baumstein with Children's Healthcare of Atlanta's Strong for Life program. So we might all of a sudden start perceiving the world to be an incredibly dangerous place. Or we might think I've done something wrong to deserve this. Everyone's response to grief can be different. Baumstein says it can cause nightmares or flashbacks, make us avoid reminders, whether that's people, places or things, or keep us on edge. The good news is not only can we collectively grieve, we can collectively cope 
and heal. Baumstein says we may want to desensitize ourselves. Avoidance only fuels anxiety. So feel your grief, then do some self-care. For some, that may be exercise, while others may need downtime. She says to take a break from looking at video and pictures of the tragedies. The sweet spot we're looking for is this capacity to feel it, but not be consumed by it. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And when it comes to talking to children about these tragedies, the expert says do it while engaging them in something that they love. For instance, talk while you play basketball or board game. She says that can make the conversation less overwhelming for the children. Yesterday, the U.S. Senate voting to advance bipartisan legislation aimed at helping veterans exposed to toxic burn pits during military service. The deal builds on the PACT Act that passed the House earlier this year. It would provide care and benefits to millions of veterans suffering devastating effects from burn pit exposure. The Senate will now take up the legislation. It is expected to pass later this week. In Wakulla County, a volunteer group is celebrating a milestone of giving. Wakulla Feeding Wakulla debuted a 10th blessing box yesterday at the Wakulla County Community Center. It's a mini food pantry stocked with essentials. Keeping the boxes full is a community-wide effort. But as our Jacob Murphy found out, in recent weeks, the shelves are emptying faster than ever. You can't miss these bright green blessing boxes. They're all over Wakulla County. This was the very first one established last year here at the courthouse. Anyone is welcome to take what they need. And of course, folks can drop off non-perishable items here as well. By now, these volunteers have the routine down pat. They arrive with donated goods to stock a new pantry. Once it's full, Thank you for food in a world where many know only hunger. A deacon puts the blessing in blessing box. Now the 10th free food source across the county from Panacea to Sop Choppy to Crawfordville. Having something year round that families and children could access. Denise Colangelo is the director of Operation Wakulla, the nonprofit which runs Wakulla Feeding Wakulla. Food insecurity is, is a problem. And we also know that people are very, they're proud. For some people, they have never had a need to take food. They've always been able to purchase food. But in this economy, it's a daily struggle to provide food for your, for your family. For almost the entire first year, the group would replenish boxes weekly. Now, in just the last two weeks, some boxes have needed to be stocked multiple times a day. You have to make a choice. Are you going to put gas in your car to go to work? Or are you going to buy groceries for your family? The volunteers say the food strain grows in summer months with school out and the boxes try to accommodate a child's needs. A lot of the children, I think, in the communities know where they are and they can come get the quick macaroni and cheese or spaghetti or something like that. And as the effort grows, so does the community support. It, it has been heartwarming. We have seen so many uh, civic groups donate funds for us and, as well as food. And the group says they hope to have 12 boxes set up by the anniversary of the first one next month. The next location will be the Wakulla County Library. Each box has a sponsor that helps keep it stocked up. The group also works to keep the boxes in working shape so they're safe to access year round. Time now for First Alert Weather with meteorologist Rob Nukatola. Well, good morning, everybody. We start off here on the day planner. Most of our temperatures in the 70s this morning and like yesterday, I think by 12 1 o'clock, most of us are going to be up over 90. We stayed up over 90 till 8 o'clock last night. That's a lot of hours of really high temperatures. 895 the official high yesterday and no reason we don't get someplace close again today. Maybe we can catch a couple of sprinkles, some energy trying to hold together through northern parts of Alabama moving into Georgia. I see a lot more energy farther off to the west where there are more big showers and storms through parts of Oklahoma all the way up towards Indiana and Illinois. And we'll see if a boundary can make it all the way this far south and east tomorrow and stick around for Friday and the weekend. If it does, we're going to see things turn more unsettled, get more clouds that look and feel like it ought to be raining a lot more than it actually does, but that will slow down at least some of the air temperatures. It's still going to be incredibly humid out there. That started yesterday and that's not going away anytime soon. Most of our numbers this morning between 70 and 74. I see a 72 in Bainbridge, a 73 at Apalachicola, it's 70 in Valdosta. The one spot not in the 70s 
That's Blakely, Georgia, where we're at 68 degrees this morning. If there's a breeze, it's real light, it's real variable, it's not doing much, but I don't see the same kind of fog this morning like we were putting up with in eastern areas yesterday and so many visibilities down near zero. Today, a little bit of patchy fog, a couple of spots with some reduced visibilities, like at Camilla, where we're down to two miles. Now, Futurecast tries to bring a few showers our way for later on today. I don't think today is going to be very many showers, and because of that, those temperatures are going to get way up there. Tomorrow, that boundary tries to get here and ends up someplace near the Gulf Coast. How far south it goes, how far north it stays makes a huge difference on where we get the better chances for showers. I think all the while, we're going to find more and more clouds across the region, and because of that, we do start to slow down some of that heat. The next five days, rain chances really low today, but starting to climb a bit tomorrow and staying that way for the weekend. Our next couple of days forecast, I'm hoping to be able to at least drop some of those daytime highs tomorrow, but I think today, no reason we don't get back to the mid-90s.